Heat pumps seem to be having a moment. If you've been wondering about how you might heat, or for that matter, cool your home during the winter and summer months, you've probably been hearing about them. They are widely viewed as one of the alternatives to heating systems that depend on fossil fuels, like oil or propane gas, as ways to reduce carbon emissions into the atmosphere, as concerns about climate change and state targets for reducing those emissions begin to bite and come closer. So what are heat pumps exactly, and how do they work? For more on that, we turn to Steve Spatz, a supply chain account manager with Efficiency Vermont, the state's energy efficiency utility, to learn more. Heat pump technology has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, refrigerants are gases that can exist both as a liquid and a solid, and depending on the state that they're in, um, they're able to absorb heat energy from um, the ambient air from which they're contained. So that's what makes them unique materials or unique gases, elements um, that we can use to move heat energy. That's the key difference um, of a heat pump versus a fossil fuel fired system or a combustion piece of equipment. And maybe is a better way to put it. Combustion equipment where you're burning a fuel, whether that's propane, oil, wood, coal, whatever <clears throat> you're burning, um, you're relying on the breakdown and of the material itself, and the fuel and the re release of carbon to release heat energy. It's released in the material by way of combustion. Refrigeration, um, that process is a matter again of moving a, um, uh, a gas typically that uh, will is able to absorb heat energy from the ambient environment that it's contained in. And in the context of a heat pump for heating and cooling our homes, that's a copper pipe, a thin you know, diameter copper pipe. And by moving that gas through a continuous loop of, of piping in um, the environment that you're trying to extract heat energy from, the gas within that pipe is able to absorb heat energy, move it to a different place where heat exchange occurs, where it transfers from a gas to a liquid and the heat energy is released. And then that heat energy is then used to either heat a space or conversely in the cooling environment, reject heat and move heat to a, a different place. So it's a transfer of heat energy versus a creation of heat energy when it comes to how we're using them for um, supplementing and or replacing combustion equipment here in the Northeast. To see an actual heat pump in action, we travel down to North Bennington where we met up with Bill Morrissey of Weatherization Works, a pilot-based energy efficiency firm that includes installing heat pumps as part of its lineup of services. Andrew, I, I, um, I like that this is a, um, a good example of a ground mount, a ground mounted unit. Uh, so this whole system sits on a, on a ground mount that is a the, in, the feet are independently adjustable, so they can be, over time, if this unit for some reason becomes out of level, you can independently level it. Because it's a good idea that the outdoor units stay relatively level. During, um, during the heating season, uh, this will form, ice will form on the coil, and it needs to get uh, away from the outdoor unit. So water will flow out of this uh, from time to time, and, and that would happen during a defrosting cycle. There is always going to be a, there'll be an outdoor component and an indoor component. So the outdoor, depending on what it's doing, it's either cooling inside or it's heating inside, and that will determine the flow of refrigerant. The beauty of these outdoor units, or cold climate heat pumps, I should say, is that you can uh, flow refrigerant in both directions. So they will heat and they will cool. All right, so here we have another one. Yeah. Uh, would, a, would a building normally uh, this size have two heat pumps units or oh yeah you could see um yeah we've been on projects with uh, as many as eight outdoor units um this is a one-to-one -one, so it's it's one outdoor unit paired with one indoor head but you could easily have an outdoor unit uh, a multi-zone that would run multiple indoor heads so you could have one location an outdoor unit and then feeding off that uh several uh several indoor units comes down to the square footage of the of the space and then um, and then sizing it uh, appropriately because you could 
you could um, undersize them certainly and, and then oversize it. So it's important to get it uh, professionally uh, evaluated. This particular unit has a has a um, uh, quite a high um, uh, seasonal uh, energy uh, factor, their seasonal heating factor of 12.5, so 13.5 at the top of the list. So this particular unit, the Samsung, really uh, really shines nicely with the, in the heating season. So, so I was wondering, uh, for houses that already have a heating system, whether oil or wood or coal or whatever, can you, does it make sense to install a heat pump system on top of that and sort of keep the legacy system as a sort of a backup? Oh, that's a or, good one. Yeah, love that. What, or what's what's the smart way of going about, or is the heat pump the backup? Yeah, the, the, all, all these systems have a performance curve. So as your uh, temperatures are dipping below zero, um, they are going to, they're going to run through more of these uh, defrost cycles. Uh, it's a process to protect the outdoor unit, and they're not going to be heating during that time. So the efficiencies uh, are not as wonderful. Uh, so say below zero, it's always nice to have another heating system. And I, I happen to heat with some wood at my own home and love it. And, but there'll, there'll be a time when I'm not going to be so uh, happy about carrying wood and stacking it and splitting it but right now it works real works really well and these systems will go down to super cold conditions it, it will run down to a negative 13 um yeah the fujitsu's are, are even colder you know work in even colder conditions so yes having a separate uh, or independent uh, system is a good, always a good idea buying and installing a heat pump system is not inexpensive but there are several incentives like tax credits available to help soften the upfront cost. And over time, they are likely to pay for themselves and free their owners from worries about the volatility of oil and gas prices. So um, the rebate, there's, there's point, of, point of sale discounts available on the equipment. So pretty much any heat pump technology has some level of um, uh, point of sale incentive available for it. And uh, that is money that is supported both through Efficiency Vermont and the utilities within where the customer is, purchase, is living that they're purchasing the heat pump for. And then on top of that, there are other factors that come into play um, through other initiatives, like currently the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed by the federal government uh, offers um, some uh, new, uh, new tax credits for heat pump equipment that had been previously sunsetted and are now going to be available again starting this year. Um, there are some programs on the horizon which are not established yet, and the details of those are not fully committed and probably won't be until at least late this year. Um, of other cash incentive rebate offers for heat pump equipment that would be coming from the federal government that would um, add on to or, or supplement what we already have, have available here in Vermont. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.